Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are so glad that you are joining us today. And I'm so excited to introduce our special guest today, Dr. Christy Smurl. Now, Dr. Christy Smurl combines Eastern and Western healing sciences and arts to help individuals achieve their highest potentials. Dr. Christy's motto is heal yourself, help heal another, start healing the world. And Christy, it is a great pleasure that you're joining us today. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me on here. Beautiful. Well, I guess we can just start right in, really. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about your personal journey with sound healing. Well, that was quite an interesting journey. So, you know, my original focus in studies in life was medicine. And I remember at one point during that journey, when I was working in an emergency department, I thought to myself, there's got to be something more. There's got to be something more to wellness and health other than just the hospital work or Western medicine. So I started looking into different modalities and I've always come from the um, kind of position I'm a skeptical first until I experience it. So I ended up taking my daughter and I to this workshop where there were all of these crystal bowls everywhere. It was local here in Claremont. And I really didn't know what to expect, but I laid down and I closed my eyes and I heard just these sounds. And I thought, how is this really gonna do anything? It's just a bunch of sounds. Long story short, by the end of it, whatever happened during that session changed me. And I realized there's a lot more that I don't know about delivering or advising health and wellness. So I think it was probably within about three months, I ended up purchasing a set for myself and I would sit and work with them and study them. And then I started learning a lot of other information on that journey about yoga and meditation, and then Ayurvedic medicine, and all of it tied in. Because really, I was a little bit arrogant at one point, and I thought to myself, well, you know, hey, I can run around in circles in the emergency department and save your life. And if they didn't teach me about these energy centers and other methods of healing, then it might just be new age garbage. And then eventually I started studying more and more, especially my doctorate program in Ayurveda. And I realized this was old school, not new age. And so I really dug as deep as I possibly could. Well, you know, I can totally relate to that. And I know that you have, you have studied many spiritual lineages um, and there, there's different things that you practice. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and how you how that relates or how you utilize that in your sound healing? Absolutely. So, you know, originally when I was studying Ayurveda, I was concurrently studying yoga. And in those general practices, I'll call them general practices, there's a lot of work that's done with what's called bija mantras. And bija mantras are these sounds which help activate and align the elements within the body or the chakras, the energy centers within the body. And the more I studied, so I eventually went into individual lineages where there's a parampara and you're initiated in. And each one of those, so one of them that I'm in is called the Satmat lineage. And the Satmat lineage uses extensive um, practice of japa or mantra practice to help activate certain centers and consciousness within the body. And then they also use a practice of inner sound listening as well. Now, I had also been initiated into the Sri Vidya lineage. And again, in that lineage, they used extensive mantra practice to help rebalance 
and realign us to our inner consciousness or, you know, what I would call the voice of God to move away the effects of modern life that kind of de-divinize us. And then I went into a couple other lineages. One is the Aghori lineage, and they also use quite a bit of mantras. So, you know, all of this sound healing just kept dovetailing upon itself. And the more I studied, the more I wanted to know. Oh, beautiful. And I know um, you are going to share um, an aspect of your work with us today. Can you kind of share with us some of your views of the benefits of your work, just the benefits of sound healing, the mantra work and so forth, when you either work with groups or you work with individuals? Absolutely. So many times people want to seek somebody outside of themselves to do the work for them. And this is a common phenomenon, even in Western medicine. And the way that I've started practicing and adapting what I do and what I teach people is I want to make them self-sufficient in their own practice. Because it's one thing to learn a science. It's another thing to experience a science being taught it. And then it's another thing to embody the science. So particularly in the practice of mantra, we use a lot of repetition and a lot of visualization so that the person can change the way that they're actually vibrating within themselves and outside of themselves. So one thing that I wanted to share today is the use of bija mantras and the use of bija mantras specifically applied to the chakra system or the subtle body. Because I find that with our current modern society, we are so outward looking, outward going, outward seeking, that that's not where we're going to find the embodiment of God. Our true nature is within us. And so when we do mantra practice and we do internal visualization and bija mantras, we are locating or uncovering the energy the voice of God that is already within us. We just have to search for it and be diligent about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so with the Bija mantras, then that is going to give people kind of a taste of what it is that you do, but also something that they can investigate more deeply and they can utilize in, you know, within their own lives as well. So uh, why don't you go ahead? Oh, sure. wonderful. All right. We'll start a practice now. Yes. All right. So the first thing that I recommend that people do before they start a practice like this is they find a comfortable position. We want the physical body comfortable. So just adjust yourself any way you need to so that you can sit upright. I prefer that this practice always be done upright so that the central canal, which is your spiritual canal or soul channel is upright and open. So just relax your shoulders, relax the spine for a moment. And the next thing that is recommended for this practice is to take stock of the monkey mind. Where is the mind? Because the mind loves to be distracted and the mind loves to do what it's supposed to do, which is think and kind of chatter in the mind. So for most people, the easiest way to move away from that distraction is to bring all your thoughts, all your attention to your breath. So close your eyes for a moment and just feel the inhale and feel the exhale. Bring all your awareness internally. See, what does your chest feel like as it rises and falls with the breath? How long is your inhale? How long is your exhale? And maybe notice the space in between the inhale and the exhale. Listen to the sound of your breath.
and if the mind at any point tries to wander off, firmly bring your attention back to the breath and the bija mantras. So before we move deep into the practice, let's internally bring our mind's eye to the very base of our spine. In yoga and Ayurveda, we call this the muladhara chakra or the root chakra. Begin visualizing a flame, a light, a brilliant star at the base of the spine. And then bring your attention a little higher up to the low abdomen, just below the belly button. This is the Swadhisthana chakra. Chakra is a wheel, a vortex of light and energy. And visualize another light in the low abdomen. Raise your attention, bring all your focus to the mid abdomen, below your ribs, above the belly button. And this is the Manipura chakra or the solar plexus. And again, visualize a light here. Keep your attention with your breathing and come up to the heart center, the Anahata chakra. The heart center, visualize a flame, a light, a glow within the heart. And again, repeat this process at the throat, visualizing a light, the light of consciousness, your consciousness as you focus there. Again, raise your awareness up to the third eye, the command center, the ajna. And then visualize a light at your crown center. Now with the next series of breaths, I want you to visualize all of these connected, interdependent, as well as flowing freely from the base of your spine. As you inhale, draw your attention from the base of the spine up to the top of the head. And as you exhale, visualize that light moving down the spine. Keep all your attention on the breath and on that light. For two more breaths. And now that you've set the stage for the practice, bring your breath, attention, and mind, your awareness to the root chakra and the bija mantra that's related to the earth element or the base chakra is lam, L-A-M. So in this, use whatever tone whatever pitch, whatever volume, and recognize that the vibration of your voice, the vibration of the bija mantra, coupled with your awareness and consciousness holding at the root is important. And we'll do each of the bija mantras four times. In a longer practice, we do a different number, but for today we'll do four. So at the root chakra, take a deep inhale. La Be sure to hold your attention at the root chakra, inhale. Third time. One 
once more. La. Take a couple breaths in between and visualize that light center expanding with the inhale and the exhale. Now bring your attention to the light center, the energy center, the Svadhisthana at the lower abdomen related to the water element. As we do each of these bijas, we are also balancing the panchamahabhutas, the five elements within the body. So keeping your attention at the low abdomen The Bija mantra is Vam, V-A-M. And we'll do that also four times. Inhale. Vam. Feel the vibration moving in that region of your body. Vam. Next two inhales and exhales, visualize that energy of your body expanding freely and gracefully. Bring your attention to your mid abdomen, below the ribs, above your belly button. This is the Manipura chakra related to the fire element. And visualize that light glowing, expanding, becoming more harmonious with the other elements. As we say the Bija mantra, Ram, R A M. Again, we'll do four. Inhale. Feel the vibration of the Bija mantra in that area of your body as you concentrate all your awareness at the abdomen. inhales and exhales, allowing that energy to become smooth and graceful. Draw your attention up to the heart center. The heart center is related to the element of air. All wellness in Ayurveda begins with balancing those five elements. So visualize at the heart center, a beautiful light. And the Bhija mantra for here is yum. Feel the vibration of that as you keep your mind's eye in the heart center. Inhale. Yum. Yum. 
in between. Let the vibrations expand. And draw your attention to your throat chakra, Vishuddha chakra. And the traditional bija mantra for the throat chakra is ham. So again, we'll do four here. Inhale. Hum. 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 Take a couple breaths and let that energy settle itself. And draw your attention to the Ajna Chakra, the command center, the third eye. Now, depending on your lineage and what you've been taught, some people use the mantra Shreem, Om, Aim, for this one, for this practice, we'll use Aum. Bring all your attention to the third eye. And visualize an openness, a clarity, a removal of what obscures the inner intelligence of your soul with a capital S yourself with capital S and let the vibration be felt within the sinus cavities in the cranium. Inhale. Oh. Now we'll shift our focus to the entire Sushumna. The Sushumna is the central canal and the subtle anatomy, the soul channel. So for the next few alms, as you say, A, U, M, alm, at the A, ah, ah. Think of the sound you make when it's so wonderful. <sighs> and at the A, draw all your attention to the root, the base of your spine. And as you slowly move up to the OO, the OO, bring your attention to your heart center. And think of the sound OO like something delicious, like Ooh, something blissful. Ooh. And as you spend equal time with the A, the U, 
then finish with the mm, feeling that vibration within the Ajna Chakra. Thinking of when you say the sound mm, Aum is said to be the sound of bliss. And the bliss that we feel when the energy centers have realigned themselves so that we are operating from the Ajna, the soul, the self, the source. And we'll do this six times together for this practice. Inhale. Tension at the base of the spine. Again, all the way down to the base of the spine, moving all the way up. Go at your own pace, your own pitch. Now just sit in a moment of silence, feeling your breath. As you inhale and exhale, let the mind be soft. Let the breath be natural. Visualizing the elements, the energy centers, the chakras in alignment. Visualizing the flow of energy moving through the Sushumna with more grace and ease. And gently open your eyes. Now, when we do a practice like this, it's important to realize that it takes time and repetition. In a book I wrote last year, I go into more detail about the visualizations, the specific yantras. Yantras are um, depictions that are related to each of the chakras, and they interlink with the elements within the body, and they also correlate with the vibrations that we set. And over time, when we begin to do this, the mantras not only begin to work on the subtle body in clearing away the effects of modern life, stress, sound, TV, social media, things like that, but they begin to help coordinate the panchakoshas, the layers of the body, the physical body, the anamaya kosha, the breath body, the mind body, the vijnana maya kosha, until we begin with enough practice to start accessing a clear channel, a clear opening between all five sheaths. And at that point, we really begin to reap the benefits. It's not a practice that can be done like once 
or once a month. You know, that's like getting a tour of the gym, but never lifting the weights. Well, and it's not a practice that somebody else can do for you. It's a practice that has to be done for yourself. It's such a beautiful practice. And as you were doing that, I was resonating your tones within my own body. And it is, I do feel so much lighter and it's, it's very relaxing and restorative. So that's such a wonderful thing to uh, share with our listeners. Thank you so much. And I, I would ask then, how do you see the future of medicine and sound healing? I would love to see the future of medicine to include in medical school, whether it be a registered nurse, nurse practitioner, doctor of osteopath, physician's assistant, or surgeon, that within their medical training, that they are exposed to the subtle body. You know, we learn all about anatomy. We learn about, you know, the all the different bones in the skull, we have to learn them by heart, all the muscles, all the arteries and veins, but we don't learn anything about the nadis, the ida, the pingala, the sushumna, a chakra. And I think that's a crime. So I first would like to see medical trainings on the subtle body and not from a hoofy poofy, you know, hippy dippy standpoint, but from an actual ancient science, you know, one of the most ancient science of living in harmony with nature are the Vedas. And Ayurveda is an Upaveda or a subchapter of the fourth Veda. But yet we don't teach this science of wellness in medical school. I would also like to see in medical schools that they teach breath awareness so that people can learn how to regulate their autonomic nervous system and brain waves and incorporate that in with sound modalities, whether it be um, wellness centers or places where people could go for, let's say, gong therapy or crystal bowl therapy, or to learn how to do meditation. But really what I find in the medical community, because I've been in the medical community for nearly 30 years now, and what I see typically is people document patient instructed on relaxation techniques, but yet they don't get taught anything. They're just told how to relax. And I believe that when people are in the future taught actual methods of internal sound tuning, let's say to Om, let's say to the Bija mantras, let's say to other lineage mantras or mantras that are consistent with their culture, their religion, that that's where we can really start healing from a multidimensional aspect rather than just here's your prescription for some narcotics you need to learn how to relax maybe go to a yoga place well you don't know what kind of quality they're gonna get there but if the medical professionals had specific tools and training with competency they could teach it right there in the office that's what i'd love to see that would be wonderful definitely um So, Christy, do you have anything that you wish to quickly share with the listeners, such as an upcoming workshop or event, uh, a new program, a book? Mm. Well, let's see. What all do I have going on? Um, I don't have any current events coming up, but I do have quite a few books out. I would say in alignment with this discussion, the book that I would recommend that they look at is the book that I wrote called Chakra Alignment, a journal and guide for regaining control over your chakras in life. And that goes over specifically all the Bija mantras, the numbers, the visualization, a journal, workbook, all sorts of things I can do. Um, I also do extensive training through healthiervibrations.com. I have a meditation teacher training program, an Ayurveda program with yoga teacher training as well. So if they're interested in learning more about those modalities, they can go there. Or I also do one-on-one practices as well. But lots coming up. I'm working on my seventh book right now, and we'll see how all that goes. 
Beautiful. So now given what we've talked about uh, today, what is one thing you'd like to leave us with or like a next step for our listeners um, that can, so that they can make some changes within their lives? Oh, well, that's, that's a can of worms there. <laughs> the first thing that I would really, rec- the first thing I really recommend, you know, cause we're talking about sound. We're talking about sound healing. I would recommend that people make clear effort at least once a day to sit down and turn all sound off, turn off the radio, turn off the background music, turn off the TV, turn off their phone, and that they find a internal process of going within themselves, finding the sound within themselves, finding their way past their monkey mind and the jibber jabber that goes along with that and going into a state of meditation, which is an inner silence. And it's that inner silence that I really find that people will be able to heal themselves because when we're only putting our sense organs outward, looking outward, listening outward, seeking outward, we miss the inner voice of God. The inner voice of God is exactly that inside of us. And the only way to access it is to be quiet. Now, the Bija mantras are helpful for aligning everything. However, we have to be still. We have to be silent. One thing that I really recommend also, along with that stillness and silence, is to go out into nature and to listen to the sounds of nature, to have a vibrational reset button hit when they go out and they listen to the sound of a stream. They listen to the songs of the birds. They listen to the croaking of the toads. And this is nature's music. And I find that much of our de-divinization comes from a constant bombarding of sound and things that we have to respond to. So when we go out into nature, we have a reset. And then to go into silence in nature and to go inside and listen to the inner sounds, the inner wisdom, the inner knowledge. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for your time and sharing with us today, Christy. And thank you for all who are listening and being a part of this this great session. Thank you very much.